about it. Frankie and I going into the, the draft, you kind of have to, you need to sort of plot out what exactly you're going to try and do with your fantasy squad. There are, there are a bunch of different categories. There's yeah. uh, on-base percentage, batting average, home runs, runs batted in, total bases, uh, stolen ERA, bases, stolen bases, whip. saves, whip, um, quality, quality quality starts. So going into a draft, you want to kind of have a, a, a good idea as to what exactly it is. How are you going to generate how are you going to generate points for your fantasy team? And Frankie and I had a good discussion at the beginning of do we want to go with pitching or do we want to go with hitting? And we decided that we were going to just literally divide it down the middle because a lot of times in fantasy baseball early on in drafts, guys will just draft tons and tons of, of hitters. So we decided that we were going to grab some hitters, but then we were going to try and grab some elite pitching early, early on, and that's exactly what we did. Um, our outfield is is monstrous. I'd say our, our big, the, the cornerstone, the rock of our team would probably be Andrew McCutcheon. Which uh, he should have a he should have a great season. Yeah, no this one year. no one expects anything but that. But we also have him surrounded with a lot of great hitters too. We have Yasiel Puig, we have uh, Adrian Gonzalez, we nice. have Carlos Beltran, nice. Albert Pujols. Nice. Who people seem on the fence around. Yeah, he's not that old, so I'm not really seeing it. He had one bad year in his career, and a bad year for him is Frankie. What was his OBP last he was year? Like 340 was 340 his OBP. OBP. It's a bad year. 20 home runs. You know, um, we have JJ Hardy. Nice. Uh, Coco Crisp uh, on our bench. We ha- or not on our bench. Our no. utility is Carl Crawford, yep. AJ Przinsky. Yep. Uh, we also have we'll, who's we have our third Wilson, baseman? Uh, we have Wilson Ramos as our catcher. Ramos is our ca- our catcher. We right? have uh, Brett Lowry's the third baseman. We you know, have... this is quality. We have, we have a, a quality team. You, you just listen to that lineup already, and you can already hear that it's no joke. Daniel Murphy also we've got in there. Yeah, second baseman. So, you know, we have we have some pieces that uh, will, will bring us in a lot, of, a lot of runs. That's one thing I think that our strong point on our team most certainly is going to be our offense. But for elite pitchers, we have Hugh Darvish, Strasburg, nice. Nice. Matt Moore. I mean, those yep. are, are three ace quality pitchers right there. We also have uh, Anibal Sanchez. Anibal Sanchez, absolute strikeout machine. You know, there's just uh, a lot of guys for closing Alex you know, Cobb we a- have Alex Cobb absolutely have, uh, be great at the bottom d- of the rotation we have David Robertson David Robertson for closing we have Hudson Street for closing Drew Smiley we're going to work on what we're going to do and we have Bartolo Colon as on well our, he's on our and bench he's on our yeah. bench so um, and we also have um, not Angel Pagan um, Eric Ibar on our bench as well yes you know, we, as well as uh, Eduardo Nunez Eduardo Nunez Eduardo so you know we really we really like the way our team is constructed it's got a good balance although it is a little it's heavy on, on the uh, on the long ball and, and runs but you get a lot of points that way in fantasy so you know there's a uh, there's a lot of things that you need to take into consideration when you're going to to pick your team up I'm, I'm curious to see who um you know who picked up um who picked up uh, Erwin Santana uh, because he had no team going into the draft, and then he was just recently signed to the Braves, and the Braves are always one of the top teams in the National League, especially in the National League East. They won the division last year. So whoever picked him up, that was a good call. He didn't have a team uh, yet, though. McManus picked Uh, him up last second. got him. All right. Yeah, so... um, the teams are, you know, you won't know until the games start, but like I said, a lot of it just depends on who stays healthy and who's injured. And if our team is healthy, I'll, I'll put our team against. Well. Yeah, I'll put our team against anybody in the league. That's awesome. Yeah, I have, I have, a, I have a lot of confidence. When we uh, got Darvish and McCutcheon, I was very excited with those two alone. Those were our first two picks. Was um, McCutcheon was first. We had the third pick overall. We grabbed McCutcheon and then Darvish on the swing around, and just at that point kept making sure that we were filling in the gaps. You know, there's going to be one position that you're batting that you're just going to have to just take, you know, you just have to take on the chin and be like, all right, this is not going to be the most ideal person we have at that position. Though, to be fair, Frankie, I don't know if there's any truly, truly weak link in terms of our offense. Our offense is ferocious. Yeah. Every single every single uh, hitter on our team is a, a major league yeah. caliber hitter, if not an all-star. Yeah, I would definitely I would definitely say so. I hope um, Murphy's gets away from the uh, injury he's got right now. Um, I don't know if it's nagging. It's day-to-day. It's, yeah, it's nothing to It's not, nothing too he'll, serious. He'll be hopefully. fine by, by opening day, I'm sure. And uh, Street, I think, is going to be okay for opening, they said. Yeah, so. no, he's another day-to-day. Um, and he he ended last year strong, so that's a... That's a, that's, a, that's a positive and plus sign. Plus, Robertson should be a nice man. He's got he's got some shoes to fill, but uh, but you know, talking it over with Johnny, I feel very confident in, in Robertson this year. Yeah, Robertson has been excellent his entire career, although he hasn't been the closer. Eighth inning, he's been you know top three eighth inning guys since he's come into the league. 
Um, I, I have no reason. A lot of people, they, they, they're on the fence about whether or not he'll be successful as a closer. I, I'm not really on the fence about it. I think that they really gave him a lot of time to, to sort of develop into that role, you know, understanding that Mariano Rivera wouldn't be around forever. And I think he's at that point now where he's a mature player. He's not young. He's not old, though, either. So... I think he's going to he's gonna do very, very well. They have him projected on ESPN for 30 saves. I think that's absurd. I think he's going to be more in 40 to 45. That's just me. Hey, got to do what you got to do. Got to have it. Got to see it. Got to want it. And if you don't want it, then flush your dreams down the toilet with the rest of the syringes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, besides fantasy baseball, in terms of some yeah, other baseball what's, news. What's going on in baseball? To, uh, you, you know, one team that was pretty dormant throughout the entire offseason that really has – impressed me as of as of recently I would say was the Baltimore Orioles the Baltimore Orioles ever since 2012 they've kind of had a, a renaissance so to speak they hadn't made the playoffs since the early 90s and uh, they finally made the playoffs in uh, 2012 and they went against the Yankees in that uh, ALDS and you know they took it to a full five game series and the Yankees ended up beating them but then in 2013 they had the, actually the same record as the Yanks and missed the playoffs they had 85 wins so I'm sure there was a lot of pressure within the ball the Baltimore baseball community to sort of all right guys make some moves make some moves you have to you know you have to fill your team out a little bit and then for most of the for most of the offseason they didn't really do so but then at the very very end I mean we're talking spring training going into spring training they made a couple of moves that I really really like a lot one and this is I recommended strongly that the Mets should have picked this guy up but they didn't was Nelson Cruz putting Nelson Cruz in the Mets lineup that makes the lineup respectable you know or, or helps make it respectable putting that with the Baltimore Orioles lineup just makes it outright dangerous cuz they already have a dangerous lineup their lineup is stacked so now you throw another fierce power bat in there for one year stacked that's a dangerous dangerous lineup you're going to see a lot of runs scoring a lot of home runs from those guys so that's huge they also needed pitching that's actually been their Achilles heel for the last couple of years and they um, they, they moved towards sort of uh, fortifying that heel in that they signed Ubaldo Jimenez, who was one of the better free agent uh -huh. starting pitchers. And then they also took a uh, took a flyer on Johan Santana. Really? From the, obviously from the... Johan. Uh, yeah, from the Minnesota Twins and then more recently from the uh, New York Mets. And you don't really know what the guy's got left. Uh, he's had Tommy John surgery, I think twice, uh, at least once, but maybe even twice. Uh, but the last time he was in a Mets uniform that season, he did throw a uh, a no hitter. So I personally, some people feel like, oh, you know, he might not do well. I personally, if you have him as a number five, he's a great number five. I mean, this is a guy who's had ace potential and has been an ace for most of his career. Maybe he's not an ace anymore, which is fine. But he's at least a better number five solution than what they've got going now. So I think that those couple of moves. I mean, you slot Nelson Cruz in there with Chris Davis and Weeders and, and, and Adam Jones and all these other guys that you have, you know, Manny Machado, all these other guys you got. That's a fierce lineup. I respect there. I'm personally more uh, afraid of that lineup than I am with the Bo than I am of the Boston Red Sox lineup. That's yeah. just me. The Boston Red Sox lineup. That's not to downplay them at all because their lineup is ferocious too. But the Orioles, they they showed that they're they're. They're all in this year, which, in my opinion, in baseball, these owners make so much money. There really is no other way to be but all in. So I was impressed with with how they uh, managed to close off their off season going into spring training. It's not done yet because the regular season hasn't started, but they certainly uh, made some power moves to really fortify their team when it looked like they were just kind of resting on their laurels. So much uh, much respect to them. Apparently, then clearly, then. So you know, every week what we do. Johnny gets a little little chip on the shoulder, a little itch. He's got a scratch. He goes over and he digs deep, right into the crevice, right into the indentation, and then breaks it open like a fresh box of nerds. So when we come back, Johnny's going to uh, Johnny's I'm gonna gonna tell, you, tell you a few things. I'm gonna tell, tell you. you a few things. He's gonna do a couple things. He's gonna go around the block and see if he's still there. Come back and listen to the neighborhood guys.